And to open the show, please give a, a warm welcome, a round of applause to Bill Cusick from Stephen Stand Up Society. Give it up! Hey, hey everyone, I am Bill. Uh, <laughs> Hurricane Matthew is making its way up uh, the eastern seaboard. Yeah, and so far it's killed nine people. But like, that's not even that many, right? Like, I feel like anyone in this room could do more than that. <laughs> Wait, you, on the phone. On the, yeah, you. You think you can, like, take out nine people right now? Yeah. That's what I thought. <laughs> I feel like money is kind of like the ultimate time machine. Because if you're rich, you can live in 2016, right? And you gotta have a car that drives itself, and your house can talk to you. But if you're like middle class, you kind of live in like 2008. <laughs> and you have to like unclog your own toilet, and like you have to drive your own car. And if you have no money, you live in the 1500s <laughs> because you can't afford running water or electricity. Class inequality is real, guys. There's no punchline to that. <laughs> If I died right now, it'd be a total waste to society because for 21 years I have consumed food and resources and education and I have produced nothing. So if I die before I graduate in six months, it's on all of you to recoup that loss. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, that's not like a bad thing. I found a way to game the system, guys. We can all get in on this. <laughs> Die before you're 21, parents, sorry. That's what I said. <laughs> Die before you're 21 and take society down with you. You guys remember Bagel Bites? Yeah! Oh, yeah. The most dangerous game is a short story by Richard Connell, in which two hunters abduct a man, take him to an island, and they hunt him, right? And he's the titular most dangerous game, because he can hunt back. And I know that story was written a long time ago, because he can hunt back. If you took me to an island, and you said, hey, I'm hunting you. That's it. <laughs> you got me. I'm unhuntable, right? You can't hunt me. Not in like a cool way, but in like the same way you can't hunt toaster strudel. <laughs> anyway guys, that's my set. We're gonna bring up your next comedian, Madeline. Hey! Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't found out who shot Spot, but I did get a punch. And poor 
not great. My friend Thomas came in one day and he looked kind of stressed out. And I was like, Thomas, what's going on? And he's like, I accidentally shot my cat. <laughs> and I'm like, Thomas, how do you accidentally shoot your cat? And he's like, well, I just saw what I thought was a raccoon. And I like, go get my shotgun, go out, shoot it. And then I found out that it was my cat. And I'm like, oh, you must have shot a spot <laughs> That's my hunch, at least. Also, if you're wondering why a nine-year-old had an access to a shotgun, this was in Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, there's not really much to do except shoot things and, like, look at civil rights memorials. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> everyone. That's my set. So now here's Chris Fitzgerald. Thank you so much for that. But if you don't know me, it's okay because I look like every other person at Stevens, like if you were to describe me. I'm a white male with brown hair, glasses, an attempt at facial hair, you know, like everybody here. Uh, but I had an epiphany recently, like, college is hard. Like, it's my third year that's just hitting me now. Uh, I don't know about you guys. Uh, you're all in college, right? On this side of the room. Uh, yeah. No, I'm sorry. You guys are all in high school. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, anyway, we've got a great show. We've got 12 live sketches for you, all written by us, uh, all going to be performed by us, and we've got two videos filmed and edited by everybody here. Everything you see in the show is all going to be done by us. It's going to be a great show. Uh, I am going to ask, please turn off your cell phones, because we're looking at your cell phones. Uh, I'm going to have to see you uh, after the show in my office. Uh, um, SGA policy, I'm sorry, that's just like a red tape, I can't come through that, sorry. Uh, but uh, if you pay attention, the name of the show is called Drake and Chris Christie. Uh, so we figured, hey, why not play a little clip from this hit TV series, Drake and Chris Christie, to start the show before our first sketch. So you guys ready? You ready to see a good show? Finding the perfect girl to go out with takes a lot of luck. Wheel leaders don't follow holes. Wheel leaders change holes. Sometimes a girl may seem perfect, then just turn out to be horrible. Love without respect was always fleeting. Like Gabrielle, I dated her for almost a month, and then I found out her favorite food, horse meat. <laughs> They believe the American people are content to live the lie with them. They're wrong. I mean, I thought I was in love with that girl. But then she ate a horse burger. You see what I mean? The United States like... of America. Wait, I don't want to punch 
this time. <laughs> one punch this time. Ow, stop punching me. We can't. Just turn the song off. Keep me on now, y'all. <laughs> Cha-cha, real smooth. All right, y'all. Now while you're cha cha look under the table and find a gun. <laughs> Grab your friend. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold it down now, y'all. Throw the gun. Go, go. Aim the gun. Go, go. Stand on your knees. Stand on your knees. No. No. No more music. I'm turning it off. You almost shot me. This is, all right. No more. No more line dancing, okay? Ever. All right? Yeah, I've been scared by you. I've been very low down. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Where did you come from? <laughs> <laughs> Man, the 
part is kind of dying down, huh? Nah, we're just getting started. It seems like everyone's leaving, you know? Yeah, we're just getting into the swing of things. It's only four in the morning. In the morning? Listen, it's stupid to still even be here. Mary left, Kathy is gone. I haven't seen Tommy in like three hours. Hey, I'm still here. Yeah, I, I know that. I feel weird leaving you here. Nah, it's fine. Go ahead. But, uh, be careful about those trials of the curse of flame, though. Wait, what is that? What are you talking about? Everybody was always leaving Andy's parties early, so we had a wizard install some door trials. <laughs> wait, wait, really? Listen, I'm leaving. I'm not going to stick around because you don't want to leave, and I don't believe that they hired a wizard.
it's so nice to meet you too. I'm so glad you showed up. It, it, it's kind of embarrassing, but I was worried you wouldn't show up. <laughs> oh, we don't need to be worried. It's my first date too. We can be nervous together. Uh, hello, my name is Pat. I'll be your service. <laughs> Can I start your job with any new drink? <laughs> um, yeah, I'll just have a water. And I'll have a Coca-Cola. Fuck! A Coca-Cola? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's no problem. I'll be right back. Call if you need anything else. Fuck! I can't believe I messed that up. I, I, waiter probably thinks I'm an idiot. Oh, you're not an idiot. I think your slipper was cute. Uh, oh shit. Here comes my ex. <laughs> well, well, well. If it isn't this, I'm gonna cheat on my boyfriend and give them herpes. <laughs> herpes? When were you gonna tell me that? You said this was your first date! It is my first date with you. I'm sorry I lied. I was just kind of nervous. How did you react? Listen, this is a major breach of trust. I don't know how we're going to move past this. But if there's no more secrets, I think we can work this out. Janet, tell me we got this stuff. I really need a fix. You're a drug dealer? It's only a part-time thing. No more secrets, I promise. Listen, I'm having a lot of doubts right now. But if there's no more secrets, I think this can work out between us. Oh, one more secret then? I'm actually a monster and I'm gonna eat you.
Uh, okay, okay. So you arrived just in time, and we are going to play a really cool game. Yeah. Okay, everybody, take these clothes, and we're going to throw them all over the floor. Yeah. Yeah. What are you guys doing? <laughs> we're throwing all our clothes on the floor, you dork. I'm not a dork. Why, why are you doing that? Why are you throwing them all over the floor? Well, Zach, it's common knowledge that if you throw your laundry all over the floor, then the, the boogeyman, boogeyman will get you! Like the monster boogeyman? Well, duh, Zach! Like, like the boogeyman that takes little kids who don't do their chores? Yes, Zach! Everybody knows that if you don't do your chores, the boogeyman will get you! That's why we didn't do our chores, we didn't brush our teeth before bed, and now we're throwing our laundry everywhere! But why would you want the monster boogeyman to get you? Because that means no more school, <laughs> no more soccer practice! But it takes you to a realm of suffering and hellfire. <laughs> no more choir! It's <laughs> great! Guys, this is weird. I don't like it. I'm leaving. But Zach, if you leave, you're going to miss out on the boogeyman. That's fine. <laughs> well, you know what? Now that he's gone, we can wait for the boogeyman in peace. Yes! Second of all, you didn't take out the trash, and oh, you didn't feed the dog. 
Well, excuse me that everybody died last week and I couldn't get into PetSmart for your premium great puppy chow for the dog. I'm sorry that I didn't put the trash out on the curb so the non-alive trash collectors could just, like, pile up. Who's gonna take the trash when everybody's dead, honey? Not me, not you, not anybody else, because they're six feet under. And I'm sorry the dog died because I didn't put food in this bowl, but he's dead, too. <laughs> Venom, he would still be alive. Oh, here we go! Everybody's dead, you're still nag, nag, nagging me. Don't talk to me like that. Excuse me. <laughs> you know what? Don't even think about coming home tonight. Coming? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Are you not gonna sleep with me tonight? <laughs> not if you were the last man on Earth. I am! I am the last man on Earth! News flash! <laughs> no, you're not. I'm gonna go fuck your boss. <laughs> Hello? You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
running water is a waste of electricity and money. So therefore, it's much more economical if you use our own natural water reserves. Also, there's a lot that helps break down the food on our hands faster. I'll be back with your lobster. <laughs> Honey, I don't like this place. I want to leave. Fuck this place, fuck the earth. The faster we can destroy the environment, the faster we get, get, weird, get rid of weirdos like him. <laughs> Uh, how am I supposed to crack this? Oh well, let me just get my tool. <laughs> ben, how did I get in there? It's time to use my dick. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. So, Jerry, how was your great time in the 
big city. Oh my god, it was great. It was a lot of fun. We saw some cool places. I actually spent a lot of time uh, hanging out with uh, Keith and his partner. His partner? Yeah, my partner John and I, we love when people come to the city so we can show them all our favorite places. Hey, you want to grab some drinks from the bar? Sounds good. Yeah. If you know what I mean. <laughs> no, I don't think we do. Are you talking about like filing reports or having game sets? <laughs> this guy gets it. Jerry, <laughs> uh, hey, what's the bathroom? Yeah, I didn't know what y'all should do.
freeze it. <laughs> <laughs> and me, well, I'm just looking to fuck strangers. <laughs> Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>